My colleague Mark and I are going to be showing you some examples of how users in Germany are integrating imagery with ArcGIS Server. The Bargische Staatsforsten, or the Bavarian Forest Service, is responsible for the management of over 3,000 square miles of forestry in southern Germany. Using ArcGIS Image Server, they quickly published 2.5 terabytes of imagery, bringing significant benefits to their 3,000 employees, as well as cost savings to their organization. They have a number of different image services covering their areas, and Mark has just been browsing ArcGIS Server for the latest imagery, which is immediately displayed. Let's look at some other services, this time of LiDAR data. Note, a single raster data set is going to be used as the source for a number of the different services we'll be showing you. This is a little train model being returned by the server as elevation values. This, a slope map. Again, the server is dynamically computing the values. Similarly, an aspect map. Such services are useful for a number of forest applications. More interesting is the surface elevation here being rendered by the server as a shaded relief. This highlights the structure of the tree canopies. Next is an image service of tree heights. The server is dynamically computing these heights by performing a subtraction between the digital terrain model and the digital surface model. Combining the tree height and shaded relief can provide some great cartographic effects. As we have shown, Image Server performs the server-side processing and so removes the requirement to pre-generate the images. So what happens if we get new imagery, such as from the GUI Iconos satellite? Uh, I need to update my color service that, uh, that Mark is actually working on. So let's look on my computer. Here we see that I'm working in ArcMap, which I use to update and manage my services. The green lines are the footprints of my existing imagery. I can turn on a preview to see the imagery. And the workflow to add data is quick. I select the type of raster, the source, define the band combinations, parameters for pan sharpening, enhancement, and author rectification. The data is now being added to my service. Once added, I can see it in my preview. And you'll see some black borders. These are no data areas, sometimes seen when adding imagery. In this case, they're caused by the author rectification of the imagery in the hilly terrain. A new feature at 9.3 is the recompute footprint feature. This performs an analysis. This performs an analysis, updating my footprint and so removing these black borders. Now, I can compile a service in preparation for republishing. I manage my services in Arc Catalog. And what I'm going to do now is to refresh the, pub the service that Mark is using. Let's go back to Mark's computer. We see here that he's still use seeing the original imagery. But as soon as he pans, he will now see the latest imagery, including the Iconos imagery. Note, the enhancement, author rectification, pan sharpening, and mosaicing is all being performed on the server on the fly. A typical forest application would then be to use the same imagery to detect areas of unhealthy forest. This requires automated feature extraction. One of our partners in this area is ITTVIS, and Mark has now switched over to using ITT's Envy image analysis application. He is connecting to ArcGIS Server using the OGC WCS protocol. ArcGIS Server is serving the same Iconos imagery, but this time as a four band WCS service. Mark will now run through a feature extraction wizard to identify unhealthy tree areas. Envy is capable of a large range of image analysis workflows. The feature extraction wizard enables us to create features from the source imagery. The wizard directs the analyst through the different steps, simplifying the process at each stage. <clears throat> the parameters 
can be entered interactively, and the results immediately shown in a very dynamic environment. Here, we can actually see the segmentation of the features. <clears throat> Interoperability is a strong focus for ESRI. An ArcGIS server supports a number of open standards, including WMS and WCS from the OGC. WMS returns the images as, as pictures, while WCS returns the actual data values that NV is actually using for its analysis. Image services are also accessible using SOAP, REST, and the Flex APIs. Image services work over the web and the client applications can actually interact and redefine parameters. So for example, the compression used for transmission can be changed, enabling the use of image services over low bandwidth networks. Once the results of the analysis are complete, they are displayed in Envy and can now be posted back to ArcMap or directly into the geodatabase. We're now back in ArcMap, and the results of the unhealthy tree analysis is actually displayed in, in red. From here, we can continue on with a spatial analyst or publishing. <laughs> Let's look at another impl implementation of ArcGIS Server with imagery, this time in Hamburg in the north of Germany. Fire departments have a great need to access the best of the available and detailed imagery. And this is especially important when being called to the scene of a fire. Mark has zoomed into an area of Ham Hamburg and is showing the top-down view of high-resolution imagery provided by pictometry. Pictometry also provides oblique imagery that image server supports. And we can see now the same area using this oblique tool from, different, from the north, the east, the south, and the west. In each case, the server is on the fly orthorectifying the most appropriate oblique imagery to the ground. Such functionality not only enables us to see the sides of the buildings from within ArcMap, but also enables the measurements of heights. Image Server is providing a number of valuable methods for quickly accessing imagery. For new infrastructure development, the Hamburg Fire Department are tasked to perform an analysis to determine the threat of unearthing unexploded bombs from World War II. They do this by scanning and georeferencing all the reconnaissance images taken between 1941 and 1945. Here we see an image service of a large number of these images over Hamburg. We can zoom into an area and see the best available imagery. The crater locations in this case have been digitized from the historical imagery. Let's have a look at another area. For a full analysis, it is necessary to visually review all the images over time. And we do this by querying the image server, which returns a table of all the um, associated images and their metadata. The selected images are loaded as separate layers within the legend. Let's now review some of these images to check for changes, location of additional craters, or other temporal aspects. In this case, we actually see the movement of a convoy from a series of these images. Now let's look at a new image of this area. The area is now covered by an airport, and we see that there are significant changes. We may want to review these, and Mark is now going to use the swipe tool to compare the new imagery against the historical imagery. The color imagery that we're seeing is being streamed to us from an image server hosted in Germany by Alta 4. This server is actually mosaicing the images directly from their source files. The Alta 4 server actually contains 25 centimeter resolution imagery of all the cities and one meter imagery covering the whole country. We can now review the old crater locations and the results of the risk analysis over the latest imagery. You have now seen a number of examples of how imagery has been tightly integrated into a complete GIS and how ArcGIS Server plays a significant role in increasing the value of imagery. Thank you. <laughs>